Yeah, so good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining today. So um, last week, Fred did a, a great presentation of introducing us to the new strategies that we want to roll out this year, 2021. And um, today, this morning, I will be introducing the Civic Centre. But before I do that, I just want to kind of give a little, just a bit of a journey actually, in terms of, of, of where the community and, and how far the community is, has come, you know. So again, as I said, today I'll take us through the first civic environment um, and I'm excited. <laughs> I hope you're excited that, you know, during a time as this, we can begin to cultivate and, you know, start the work of living out, being a city within a city. And in terms of the community and, and, and you know, it's, once, it's still a fellowship, but we, you know, would meet week on week, um, those several years ago. And we spent those years educating ourselves because, you know, that's where it starts. It starts um, from the renewing of your mind. And so we, we spent the time grappling with concepts that should be a norm to the body of Christ, but it was new, it was new terrain. And um, we had to unlearn our religious presuppositions because a lot of us were coming from church background and we felt that there was a calling, a calling for more. You know, there is more to these four walls, there is more. And, and that was the call on, on each of us individually within our own walks with Christ. And um, so, we, so we unlearned some of these religious presuppositions. We educated ourselves on citizenship in God's kingdom. What is that? Um, how does that look like? You know, we, we, we educate ourselves on, on even his laws and, and his authority, looking at, at Jesus Christ as the king first and foremost and understanding what that meant. You know, Jesus, yes, Jesus is our shepherd. Yes, he's our Lord. Yes, he's our friend, our comforter and all of these things. He is the, those things. He's our savior, yes. But first and foremost, he is the king of all kings. And so it was really about understanding what that meant in the context of the kingdom, his kingdom. And um, we also took the time to educate ourselves on, on God's theocratic government, his kingdom culture, forming a new language, a new mindset, you know, establishing that every believer should have one purpose. And that is to manifest the ecclesia, that is to manifest God's kingdom, his country, we also went through the Bible and looked at the journey that patriots took, the likes of Noah, Abraham, Moses, and, and others. And um, we looked at how God called them out, you know, to achieve one goal. And that one goal was to establish his kingdom, his nation within the nations around them. And we saw that. We saw that quite clearly, very clearly, actually, when we looked at other nations in the Bible, um, like the Canaanites, Babylon. Assyria, we, we really took the time to learn the culture of, of that day. Um, and what else? You know, after, well, those are a few things. Um, that's the bulk of it, but there was obviously so much more that we, we did and we spent those years going through and, and just going over and over until we, we felt we're at a point where, okay, we've re-educated ourselves, we've de developed a kingdom mindset, and now we've arrived at a point of wanting to build the Ecclesia. And so when so much has shaken the nations that we live in, as we can see today, um, you know, a life that was once reliable, especially if you're living in, in Western society, life was somewhat to, to a certain degree reliable, predictable. Um, it's something that we, we could control to a certain degree, as I said before. And, um, but now <laughs> what are we faced with? We're faced with lockdown after lockdown, restriction after restriction, complete unpredictability, the opposite of what we're used to. And, you know, I'm sure you've heard of this term that has been, that's been kind of said so many times that we are in unprecedented times, unprecedented, unpredictable times. And the nations around us have, have truly been gripped with fear. It's been, it's been, it's, it's been fear driven. But as citizens of God's kingdom, how should we look at this? We should know that his kingdom is full of wealth, full of resources, and we rely on his words. We rely on manifesting his words. 
so when we hear the words like you know the lord's prayer your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven we have a burden upon us to ensure that his nation not only lives in us you know individually and personally no but it comes down to us it lives around us through us over us and 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 all the rest and and though we live in this world we are not of it why because we are of another world how reassuring is that that reassures me and it's not just a spiritual nation either it's a physical one this is why it's so exciting to be a part of this to build and to to grow and in light of building an ecclesia, we've come to understand that it's community, education, governance, and initiatives that are, see it as a pillars, overarching strategic infrastructures of building an ecclesia. And so today, the community arm of this strategy is what I will be taking us through. So then what motivates this new strategy of implementing the four civic spaces, and, and I know Esther mentioned it briefly during prayer, and also Fred touched on it last week. Those civic spaces are the civic center, which is the community arm of the strategy, which I'll be talking about today. Academy, which is the education aspect. Civitas, which is the government aspect, aspect and also an enterprise hub, which is the initiatives aspect. So what is the why behind the strategy? Now, Fred mentioned these things last week. And I want to go over them as well. We know that this is for the new man and not the old. So this is about a new mindset. This is about citizens understanding nationhood. And it's also about a willingness. You know, even though it's new terrain, it's about putting our hands to the plow and looking, up, looking ahead. I, I know that there's the scripture and Jesus says it. Jesus said, um, uh, no one who puts their hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. It's fit for what? It's fit for service. So it's, it's okay not to have it all figured out, but it starts with a willingness. And there's also um, this wolf photo, a really quite a powerful photo. And I don't know if, if some of you have seen it before, but it's basically a, an, an image of a wolf pack traveling through thick snow and there's the one wolf at the front who is basically cutting through the snow, creating a path for the others. And um, it's not like the wolf was saying or wailing that, ah, oh, this is hard work creating this path. Someone else should do it. No, it's simple. It was about them getting from A to B. So let's go. That is the, the mentality and the mindset is about uh, the willingness to do, you know. And so these spaces also shape us for society and not religiosity. It's about us thinking bigger, wanting bigger. We can't be tied down to ritualistic operations of church. And um, not, I'm not saying that things like prayer and worship, even listening to the sermon, collecting tithes and all of that is a bad thing. But when you're repeating that again and again, every Sunday from week to week, you have to then ask yourself, was this it? <laughs> is this what God called us to do? Did he call us to be doing these type of activities week to week? And it becomes religious. Um, there's some things that are obviously important to continue to do, to pray, to um, worship together. But Christ gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He didn't give us the keys to a billion. It, it's much more than that. And we have to operate in that way. Also, these spaces connect us to purpose and not employment. It cultivates hidden potential. It's about building these environments. So it requires us to be builders, you know, to be productive, to be laborers. The harvest is plenty, but the laborer, the laborers are few. That's an iconic Bible verse that we all know as well. So it's about shared responsibility. And in so doing, it will create those opportunities opportunities upon opp opportunities to be the best that we can be in this kingdom. And I've said that quite a few times before about, we need to be the best that we can be <laughs> in his kingdom. You know, we weren't just called to, to be receivers. We were called to more, to be doers. And in so doing, that's where your gifts and your talents will be realized. We want our lives to be one that is well lived, 
one that 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 is lived and and walks you know in purpose that is what our life should be about and again in so doing our potential will be realized and actualized these spaces also develop pathways to maturity fred has said this before that you know it is the desire for maturity is in our dna it's innate paul said it as well in romans he said that the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of sons and not only that but we ourselves grow in inwardly and eagerly as well for the adoption to sonship for mature sons to represent their father's business so we are eager for the father to proclaim to us just as the father did to Jesus Christ and and he said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased this is what we're eager to hear so developing these spaces help to support discipleship and lastly we need to raise strategic leaders who have the spiritual intelligence to govern and can manage wealth and legacy god's mandate right from the beginning right in genesis was for man to have dominion that is to be able to govern he desires for our maturity he desires for us in isaiah it says come let us reason together he desires for us to come and reason with him in the things that matter to him his business many believers are are hardly taught how to govern with the godhead how to be coheres with him how to really reason with him in that manner but being a part of building these spaces will put these things into action So let's go through what we will cover. I'm going to define what is a civic center, the biblical premise and why, the history of civic centers, our beliefs, missions and goals, why the space is important, services and meetups and also what support is needed, how you can help. So let's define it. what's a civic center. I've got here that is a prominent land area so it's the focal point within a community and it's a it's a network of spaces and uh, even buildings used for providing services to the local community there's a term that that says municipal it's related to municipal facilities so that's one of the um synonyms to civic center it's you know municipal facilities are administrative offices designated by local government to provide public services the common ones that we know about and and definitely have heard of are housing water supply police and fire department or headquarters as well those can be um part of an administrative office in 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 a civic center as well as having a library which is also a public space um even waste disposal and and basically anything that's council tax related those type of services are what you will find in a civic center so it's situated in a community um other than local government offices a civic center can also include birth death and marriage registration services public meeting spaces to hold free classes or or even memorials honoring important members of the community it has some modern applications too in some countries a multipurpose arena can be called a civic center so basically a multipurpose arena being a big stadium and that combines venues for sporting events theaters and concerts and it's in some countries like india and australia you might also see a, you might also hear of a civic center being referred to as a shopping center So the um civic center is about providing services is about the productivity of the local area and welfare of the people so it incru- improves local community and well and the well-being of citizens it's always geared around supporting citizens ensuring that they know what's going on in their community and and maintaining a good quality of citizenship right let's look at the biblical premise and why Civic centers exist as public spaces in scripture. Although not called civic centers, the B- the Bible provides numerous accounts of central public spaces which existed as a central point for the social and cultural life of the city. 
So when we refer to civic centres, basically, we're not deviating from historical record. It's always existed, but in different forms. So if we look back at history, if we look back at the records, we'll see that some of the examples are assembly, marketplace, public square, synagogues, synagogues, sorry, city gates, temples, and also arenas. So these are all types and forms of civic centers. All of these spaces, all of these central public spaces were, were places of assembly for religious, political, social, and cultural purposes. Now I wanna delve into to this a little bit. If we look at Acts chapter 16, verse 19, it basically talks of when Paul and Silas were dragged into the Roman marketplace to face the magistrates. And that was because Paul drove a spirit out of a woman who was fortune telling. It was in the very marketplace that they were public, publicly stripped, beaten and ridiculed. It's where judgment took place by the magistrates, which are basically judges who held one of the highest offices of state. So as you can see, it relates back to a political area, um, one where even the people were gathering around and judgment took place there. And um, when we read of city gate in the Bible, it shouldn't be just seen as a doorway into the city. It was actually much more than that. It's where citizens met, kings and other authorities judged. Prophets like Jeremiah, they were, um, he was crying out, delivering messages to the kings and people of Judah. And it was at the city gate he was doing this. It was at the city gate that the Lord told him to, to deliver his prophecy to the people of Judah. It's also where Ruth, as well in the Bible, became Boaz's wife, and it was in the presence of elders and witnesses uh, that Boaz legalized his transaction with his sandal. It was at the city gate this all happened. So the city gate served many purposes. I also read somewhere that according to biblical references and archaeological finds, the city gate space served as a combination of town hall, ad hoc law court, marketplace, a park bench, Hyde Park corner in the UK, which is basically um, a gateway to London, so to speak, and also like a, a place of national pride when you look at the history. And even the speaker's corner in Hyde Park, which is reserved for public speaking. So much life took place in the city gate is really what I'm trying to get at. These types of public spaces are central to developing civic life. Local communities and societies at large have always sought to develop citizen, um, have always developed to, so always sought to develop citizenship, institutions and civilizations through a central location, which is what the term that we hear today, civic center. So now let's look at the history of civic centers. And I wanna start with the etymology of what civic actually means. Where does it come from? The word civic comes from the Latin word civis, which was the word for a citizen of ancient Rome. And it's also a root word for city, which is where civitas comes from. And Esther's gonna delve into that in her presentation in a few weeks time. So civitas is related to city. That's where the root word of city comes from. And it can also mean anything related to a city. Civic is also related to the term civilis, which means civil and is applied to civilization. In terms of the evolution of civic centers, well, it stems from the age old Greek concept of what is called an acropolis. And basically that's an image of one right there. An acropolis is translated as high city, city on the edge, city in the air, <laughs> because of how high up it is. And the Acropolis are, are basically strongholds built on a high hill above the city. One of the most famous ancient sites of Athens, Greece, is their Acropolis and basically what is left of it. Over the centuries, the Acropolis in Greece has been repurposed and taken on many functions. It's been a home to kings, it's been a citadel, which is basically what you call a large fortress. 
it's been a home to gods, religious centers, and it's now a popular tourist attraction. So if you want to go to, to Athens, you could definitely stop by that populace. It's a tourist attraction now. Let's look closely at Citadel. And um, I, really, I really want to point out, in terms of Citadel, I want to point out um, in, you know, the fact that in ancient history, kings would pick the highest point in the land for their strategic advantage. And um, we can see this, we can see that in, in David, we can see that uh, in Psalm 2 it says, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. And so we know that David took the stronghold of Mount Zion, the fortified hill in Jerusalem, and he possessed that land. So it was, is it, you know, let's look at the citadel. A, a citadel really and truly is, is a, a defensive core, is a watchtower. And again, it's a strategic advantage. That's why it was put so high up. The concept of civic centers also has its roots in what is called Roman forums. So Roman forums is originally a marketplace for the ancient city of Rome. It's a rectangular open space surrounded by, right now anyway, is a rectangular open space surrounded by the ruins of several important ancient government buildings. And that was located at the center of the city. These, this Roman forum, served as the hub of public life in which commercial, religious and political activities occurred. So very similar to the city gate. The Roman Forum, again, same as the Acropolis in Athens, it's now a, a tourist attraction in Italy, Rome. And I really wanna pull, uh, pull out this verse here, Matthew 5, 14. When Jesus spoke about his ecclesia, what did he say? He said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. That's the New King James Version. The NIV Version says it's a town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. So in other words, he wanted his body of citizens, us, you and me, the citizenry of the kingdom to be situated prominently from a secure place, serving as the citadel in the public square. Zion is spoken of in this way as well. In um, Psalms, Psalm 50, it says, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. He wants his kingdom and citizens alike to shine, to shine before others. Let people see it, don't hide it, so that they can glorify my father in heaven so that the father can be glorified so is never civic centers and the acropolis and um the citadel has never been um taken away from what has always been culturally there and this is why i wanted this verse uh to be used as a reference that just like a citadel just like a city on the hill this is how God views his kingdom, how he views us as citizens of his kingdom as well. So we're continuing on with the history of civic centers. And I really want us to now look at the civic centers in the UK. When we look at civic centers in the UK, it contains local government offices and also public surface buildings. And its main reason for existence I would liken to a customer service center. So it, so look at it as, as an offline version of your local council website, which all of us have in our different boroughs. And that's his key function. His key function is to be as a, as a customer service type of setup. And in keeping with the desire to sustain local democracy and reform local government, Many civic centers were designed and replaced from town hall builders in the 1900s. So in terms of the UK, how we have the civic center today, it was basically um, a replacement from town hall buildings right from the 1900s. And this was in keeping with sustaining local democracy. It was all, always about local government, local government. And um, some of these images, in fact, all of the images are taken from um, the Cardiff Civic Centre. And this is one of the oldest and best preserved civic centres in the UK. 
it consists of a number of early 20th century buildings. So you've got the Cardiff Crown Court on the left. Um, it's also got the Wel Welsh government headquarters. It's got a museum. It has memorial stones or plaques to commemorate events and people. It also has its central police headquarters right here. And also this really extravagant and beautiful Central Park area. This was the picture from what it was and this is what it is now. So that's the history of civic centers in the UK. And now I want to, I want to take us to the civic center in Ecclesia and how this looks like. So let's first of all start off with what we believe. Civic centers are vibrant community spaces which foster unity and empower citizens to work together collaboratively. This is what we believe. This is what the civic center is all about, making sure it happens. In terms of its mission statement, what is its main purpose? To provide a central hub for citizens to access the wealth of information and services within the Ecclesia. This is the main and essential purpose of a civic center. If there's anything that you take from this presentation today, it is what its mission is all about, what the civic center wants to provide to the Ecclesia. And that is to provide um, citizens with the wealth of services happening in their local Ecclesia. There is so much that citizens are doing. There's so much that we have to offer and this, Civic Centre is meant to serve as an information point, which I'll move on to this, the core values. It's the point of information for what's happening in the Ecclesia. It's also um, meant to serve as accessible services for members to get support. This is one of the core values of the Civic Centre. And lastly, to foster collaboration through community meetings and also special interest groups. And I'm going to delve into that um, in the next few slides. Lastly, here are some of um, the 2021 goals for the Civic Centre, which again, I'm definitely going to emphasise and um, elaborate on in a few slides. So why is this space important? I talked about the mission statement and, you know, the main purpose of the Civic Centre. But what... Do, does the Civic Centre want to help do? Why is it, is it important for us to have? It's important for citizens to find the information that is needed, the information that, that you need is important to, to, to find it um, at the Civic Centre. It's also important to know and understand your rights, duties and responsibilities as members, as citizens, as well as participate in community decisions, which can affect any of us. This space is important to access services as well, so that if any support is needed, you'll be able to get it easily as well. And it's also important, I've mentioned it before in, in the, um, the values, the core values of, of the Civic Centre, it's also important to foster productivity in local communities. It's always about showcasing the best of what the community and Ecclesia has, has to offer in terms of its productivity and creativity. Now, I wanna take us, um, I wanna spend some time to take us through some of the services that the Civic Centre will provide. What are the particular services and how will we use it? Now let's look at the first, service here, town hall meetings. So town hall meetings are for members who are passionate about improving their community and want to participate in decisions that affect them. So it includes, but are not, but it's not limited to pathetic prayer meetings. Where will it be held? It will be, it will be now held in the town hall space on our website. Community calls for input, like uh, policy making discussions, 
that will, will be classified as a town hall meeting. Community surveys that we do annually, that's also a town hall meeting. And these meetings are specifically for members. Um, these are, you know, some of these things mentioned are what we currently do, um, but we can always add to this. And it's just good to show where and, and what it will now be classified as. So where it will be on the website um, and what it will now be classified as. So that's one of the services, town hall meetings. Another service that sits within the Civic Centre are what we call public square meetings. And just like the name suggests, it's an area for members and non-members. So as it says here, join fellow citizens from around the globe in the public square to, sh to share and discuss the, affair the affairs of the kingdom. That's his true essence, basically. Public square meetings, again, include, but are not limited to, conferences or seminars, table talks and Q&A forums. These are some of the things that public square uh, meetings um, will be classified as. Another service that is on our website that can be utilized by all, by all of us is um, the Heart and Soul Counseling Service. So this one right here. And it offers citizens a safe, supportive and confidential space to explore the things that may be troubling them and affecting life and relationships. So I mentioned that it can be utilized by any of us. You can schedule an online counseling session on the platform amongst ourselves um, or with, with someone outside of the community. And you can use the space, use the platform. You know, it's secure, it's confidential, it's a conferencing platform, it can be used and utilized. Some of the meetups that will happen on a civic center platform, Women's Talk is one of them. And this group is for women to come together to study, share and support one another through life's difficulties and challenges. And um, from light hearted topics such as fashion, food, to more sensitive topics such as sexuality, abortion and premarital pre sex, nothing is off the table such um, a group and um, any type of events that are held or meetings will happen on this platform, Civic Centre Space. Currently, Women's Talk Book Club, um, we meet regularly to review a book that every woman must read, <laughs> Disciplines of a Godly Woman. Um, that's what we're currently reviewing right now. And we, um, we meet in the Women's Talk platform and in terms of further meetings, it will happen on this platform now in the public square section. Teens Talk, Teen Talk, another one. That's another meetup. And it's a space for young citizens from the age 13 to 15 who are curious and want to grow in their understanding of the kingdom. So in terms of when they meet up, this will happen um, uh, in this platform, Civic Center. These meetups and services, they're not exhaustive. It can always be added to, um, it can always be refined. Um, it's, uh, it's where a consultation can happen to, uh, with the members to review whether we need any additional services and meetups. So um, again, this is what is happening right now, but so much more, we have so much more, you know, just amongst us that we can um, we can do and um, productivity that we will see. So I definitely see this space expanding and expanding and growing. So now the global calendar, this is really important actually. The global calendar is, um, is important. I say it's important because in terms of, of where we'll be meeting from week to week and even month to month, the global calendar is gonna be so necessary to know this to know where, basically. Um, as we roll out our new civic spaces, the global calendar will become the go-to place to know where an event is happening. And to access the calendar, www.restorecitizenship.net, and if you click on events, there uh, should also be a link to where the event will happen. 
and this is how we can access and know what's going on, um, especially as we, we have these new changes. Now, when it comes to the Moodle app, the Moodle app is also very important because it's, it's part of the service. It can be downloaded so that it, you can have it on your phone. And these are some of the things that the Moodle app can, can provide and do. You can access civic spaces on there. You can find out about upcoming events on the global calendar using the Moodle app, as well as enrolling onto curriculum, courses and classes. You can also contact fellow citizens. Um, there's the private messages that, that also sit in the app as well. You can receive instant notifications. And if you're not receiving instant notifications so far, it's just a matter of changing your settings so that it can pop up, pop up on your phone for you know when events are happening and even messages as well as just any updates and news. And also you can contribute to forums using the app too. Once you've downloaded the Moodle app, simply enter the web address, restorecitizenship.net, your username and password, and boom, it's done. <laughs> basically. So in summary, there's two statements that, that are very important to summarize all of this. The first being this one. We must not make the kingdom of God abstract and intangible, but vivid, transcending heaven by manifesting the kingdom now, impacting our social structures and transforming our civil lives. This is so important. It's so important to not look upward, so to speak, or not just look upward and say, you know, the kingdom of God is up there and it's not down here. No, 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 it's down here. And it's not just a spiritual thing. This is a practical thing. This is um, something that is vivid. It is, yes, it's new terrain in terms of um, building, in terms of, of what we want to, to, to build in, um, when it comes to the community, education, government, and initiatives element of building the Ecclesia, because it really does depend on, on every community, it depends on every locality, what is needed. But actually, these are the key ingredients. Um, when we, we look at the kingdom of God and we look at kingdoms around us, we know that there are current and common themes that uh, um, underpin every society and every kingdom and that's the authority, law, government, citizenship and culture arm and if we know this then we know that the kingdom of God is not, um, is not any different from that. So yes, it must impact our social structures, yes it must transform our civil lives, yes we must manifest it now Yes, we might not have all the answers, but it's about the willingness. And that's what I'm trying to get at. The final statement to summarize what the Civic Center is all about. Let's build a caring and collaborative community of citizens. 